Ongoing writer director commentary for C for Chaos. This is episode 14, A Ride in the Dark. This is JT McRoberts, your guide for these commentaries. We must go on record by saying this will apparently be the longest running commentary that I will ever record because we're going to do one for each one of these webisodes as they come out. <laughs> Who's listening to them? I don't know. But, uh, I don't know, perhaps if we put C for Chaos commentaries, a.k.a., I don't know, um, no budget film school for ma how to make bad films or how to avoid making bad films, and that's what we'll call it. So, here we see Standard Poor Men's Process, a shot of uh, actor Scott Thomas and Amy Lauder as Art and Bella. So, main characters for C for Chaos. All right, in the dark episode should be subtitled More Stuff That Modern Audiences Don't Care About Hearing. This was an attempt at uh, just building some, char some character with these two guys to give them a quiet moment alone outside of the plot. Their, their little love story subplot, which is actually part of it, unrequieted love triangle with with the character of Emma who is also running around um, here this gives the characters of Art and Bella a chance to breathe and just share with each other and you see a little bit of their past relationship issues uh, kind of rear its ugly head uh, some of the things that they talked about there's there, there's a lot of things that I tried to leave to the subtext um, and just make those suggestions based on what Art and Bella are saying to each other and you just kind of put the pieces together in the past you know I, I was very much trying to avoid writing something and saying yeah, Arthur, this is why we broke up. No, Bella, take me back. Yeah, you yeah, just just standard, straightforward dialogue. You know, I, I wanted to leave a lot of things really vague, but then also give them specifics that they could share emotionally. Like Bella talks about their par the park, their tree. So in, in talking about those things, hopefully the audience will take part in the storytelling process and um, complete the closure that is necessary in order to fill in the pieces of their shared backstory. You know, I don't need to tell you, I don't need to have Bella say, hey, we walked through that park every day on my lunch hour, you know, it meant a lot to me. We did this there, we did that. You know, it's just kind of a, a quiet, quick, poetic aside to uh, this tree that they they shared a sentimental bond over in their backstory and um, this episode I, I don't know I suppose it's more uh, more soapbox stuff from me if you've uh, listened to the podcast over at MVP Mutant Radio that you can find at MVP Mutant Radio dot blogspot dot com cheap plug You've heard me. Uh, you've heard me say things that echo or mirror some of Art's complaints about uh, I don't know corporate media producers. You know the media conglomerate, the kind of stories that were ultimately fed by these big franchises that kind of take over the world, whether it's Disney or Marvel or DC or what have you where along the way the characters get lost mainly because they are you know they've been exploited to the nth degree taken way beyond their original intentions carried on way past the original creators ideas and uh, intentions for those characters and they've they've just become corporate billboards and that's why we end up with things like 
five ongoing Wolverine series or you know, seven Batman series. You know, how can you really have Batman have this many different stories going on every single day, week, month of his life? And he still manages to be in like the be in Gotham and on the moon at the same time or something. It's all really kind of ridiculous because in speaking of the superhero genre in particular, superheroes always dealt with myth making and myth making is not of the literal world. So storytellers have to be careful when uh, when making their myths that they don't shackle them too much in the real world that they uh, they maintain that connection to the other world that that shifting ever-changing side of myth and side of magic and a lot of Sea for Chaos has to do with with Art's character both one cre getting in touch with that world through his artwork and two getting in touch with that magic through uh, the events unfolding in this series.